But in addition to all the bad things that are likely to happen to them as adults, there's also the effect that long-term stress has on them when they're still kids, especially on their brains and their ability to learn. If you look on the molecular level, uh, you're walking through the forest and you see a bear, right? So you can either fight the bear or run from the bear. That's kind of your fight or flight system, mm -hmm. right? Right. And your body releases a ton of adrenaline, right, which is your short-term stress hormone, and something else called cortisol, which is, tends to be more of a long-term stress hormone. And this dilates your pupils, gets your heart beating fast, you know, your skin gets cold and clammy. That's because you're shunting blood from anywhere that isn't absolutely necessary to the muscles that you need to be able to run from that bear. The other thing that it does, now you can imagine that if you're about to fight a bear, you need some, some gumption to fight that bear, right? So it kind of shuts off the thinking portion of your brain, right? That executive function, cognitive part. And it turns on the real primal aggression and the things that you need to be able to think that you're going to go into a fight with a bear and come out on the winning side, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's really good if you're in a forest and there's a bear. The problem is when... You know, that bear comes home from the bar every night, right? And for a lot of these kids, what happens is that this system, this fight or flight response, which is an em emergency response in your body, it's activated over and over and over again. And so that's what we were seeing in the kids that I was caring for. When the brain does something over and over and over again, it creates pathways that get more and more ingrained. So this kind of repeated stress affects the development of these kids' brains. And especially affected in this situation is a specific part of the brain that's called the prefrontal cortex, which is where a lot of these non-cognitive skills happen. Self-control and impulse control, certain kinds of memory and reasoning, skills they call executive functions. If you're in a constant state of emergency, that part of your brain just doesn't develop the same. Doctors can see the differences on brain scans. Dr. Burke Harris says that for these kids, the bear basically never goes away. They still feel its effects, even when they're just trying to sit there quietly in English class. And if right at that moment, someone asks you, oh, could you please diagram this sentence? Or could you please divide two complex numbers? You'd be like, what are you talking about? And so that's what we were seeing in the kids that I was caring for, is that a lot of them had a terrible time paying attention. They have a hard time sitting still. And you hear about this in lots of schools. Head Start teachers in one survey said that over a fourth of their low-income students had serious self-control and behavior problems. Nadine Burke Harris says that it's true for her patients, the ones with adverse childhood experiences, like neglect, domestic violence, a parent with mental illness or substance abuse. For our kids, if they had four or more adverse childhood experiences, their odds of having tr learning or behavior problems in school was 32 times as high as kids who had no adverse childhood experiences. <laughs>